This video is sponsored by Skylum, makers of photography editing software Luminar Neo. If you want to simplify the path to, wow, less futzing, more fun with your photo editing, hop over to 3bmep.co slash Luminar Neo to learn more. And if you decide to go for it, save 10% by using the coupon code HUE. Thanks, Skylum. Every professional should remain always in his heart an amateur. Alfred Eisenstadt. For professionals and amateurs alike, tripping the shutter is only halfway through the journey to a finished photograph. That would be me. But as Claudia puts it, The magic happens in the edit. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to do something a little bit different, a brief primer on photo editing for those of us looking to bring their photography beyond simple picture taking. Most especially, I suppose, this is for those of us who have the ambition of moving beyond smartphone photography, that is, beyond the limitations imposed by the smartphone camera itself, the few square inches of smartphone screen real estate and the world of smartphone editing apps, call that world rich but limited. In other words, those of us who probably have or are on the verge of having their first dedicated camera. Or, perhaps, those of us returning to photography after a long absence, dating back to the end of the film era, finally ready to make the jump to a dedicated digital camera and digital workflow, maybe most especially mirrorless digital camera. All without spending an inordinate amount of time or money futzing with complicated editing software, yet wanting something more powerful than a package like Adobe Photoshop Elements. So, let's get into it. First, if you've never edited your images before at all, I suggest you do start with your smartphone and Instagram for five reasons. One, smartphone cameras are dead simple, capable of image quality far better than they are often given credit for, and are largely futz free, save for potentially dropping the entire thing to the floor because, hey, it's a phone and it is absolutely not designed to feel or be held like a dedicated camera. Two, the editing software is built right into the phone and pretty much as intuitive as it gets. You literally start by using nothing more than your fingertip to play with a relatively small, but call it gratifying number of editing tools it offers. That is, once you open the photo in the app. Three, it helps cement the idea that Claudia and I assert is the very first step in the editing process, which is curating your images. That is, being selective about the ones you work on, even more selective about the ones you share. Four, you will begin to place your work in the context of other people's work and be well on your way to finding your tribe. That is a community of people who share, at least to some degree, your particular way of seeing the world. And five, second, this video is aimed at those of us either not yet ready or else unwilling to commit to the cost or learning curve of high-end editing software like Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom or Capture One, which are very powerful, amazingly powerful, but can and usually do require major futzing. And sometimes annual licensing fees. Those really add up. In fact, that's why I'll be using Luminar Neo today, because it turns out that even advanced photo editing software does not have to be expensive, does not have to be arcane, can be easy to use, can generate wonderful results, can actually be fun you don't need to enter the futz zone. Not anymore. In fact, if there is one overarching reason to move beyond your smartphone or tablet to a dedicated computer, I think it's as simple as this. A bigger screen. A. You can see more images more clearly at the same time so that you can more easily curate those images. That is, determine which images are worth editing in the first place simply by comparing them side by side. And B. You can better see individual images, that is, more easily recognize details, good and bad, and thus more clearly capitalize on opportunities to improve those images that you might otherwise have missed. But before you can do that, of course, unlike your smartphone-only workflow, you'll have to load the images from a physically separate dedicated camera into the software. So let's turn from the theoretical to the practical and begin right now with the best way we've found to go about it. Now, I'm a Mac user, but the basic concepts are the same. One, create a folder on the fastest drive you have, which will almost always be your computer's internal solid state drive. 
Name the folder something meaningful, like the place and date or occasion at which you took them. This will save a lot of thumb twiddling later on when you're editing, and you will be able to easily back up or move your images to a slower external drive to free up space when you don't need the speed. Two, don't use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to transfer your images to that folder, unless you have no choice, because over the air is by far the slowest way to do it. Instead, use a dongle like this one, or a cable like this, which you then plug into your computer. By the way, if you're using the dongle, make sure the card is properly seated. Three, once the computer recognizes the files, copy them into that folder, and then only when you're certain that all of the files have been loaded, eject the card or the camera. Four, now you can load all of the images directly into your editing software and start the curation process by viewing the library, or what I and some others of us old enough to remember call a slide sorter view. The first thing we're going to do here is flag the images we want to take a closer look at by hearting them, or favoriting them, or flagging them individually like this. Or by highlighting a number of them all at once like this. The very next thing you'll do is remove from view all the images you haven't flagged by clicking on the Showing drop-down menu and clicking Favorites, like this. This leaves us with only those images you flagged, and now we can make them larger by going to the third drop-down menu, like this. Ultimately, selecting an individual image to edit by clicking on it. As you scour the frame, you may change your mind. Best to immediately unheart and let it disappear from sight. You can always change your mind again. Change your mind about what other images stand scrutiny or what images you've previously rejected that you think maybe now might deserve a second look. That's what curation is all about. You can do this at any point in the process. Sometimes Claudia and I will return to images we've passed over years earlier and think, hey, why didn't I take a closer look at this one? The point is that this is an iterative process, not a linear one. After all, we grow and change with experience, and so do our tastes and our photographic eye, especially once you truly understand just how powerful editing can be. I suppose it's worth stating the obvious because it may not be obvious to everyone. And that is, we work one image at a time. Put differently, we never, ever, ever apply a LUT or presets to all of the images at once. Claudia and I believe that each image will tell us what it needs, and it is very rare, except when one sprays and prays, that every image will be exposed precisely the same way, to the same effect, with the same tonality or color, the same subject matter, framing, or feeling. And applying presets before scrutinizing each image on its own may mask deficiencies you might have otherwise picked up. Let's pick this one. The questions now come fast and furious. Please forgive my grammatical breach. I just find the film reference entertaining. Why did I select this one? What within the frame is the most important thing? What else in the frame adds, subtracts, or does nothing to amplify that thing? Is there a second or third photograph within the frame altogether more compelling than I'd first realized. Whatever adds to what's important, keep it and be prepared to work on it. Whatever doesn't, ditch it if you can. At this point in one's evolution, this usually means cropping, but hold that thought.
And by the way, the dirty little secret, the thing that neither adds nor subtracts, get rid of that too. Now we begin to explore basic global changes, things like raising or lowering the overall exposure, changing the contrast. But don't be afraid at this point to swing all kinds of sliders all over the place, all the way left or right, because this makes it easy to quickly determine the boundaries of their impact. Try different combinations of things and you may find they confound or exceed your expectations. This can also be the point at which you begin to play with presets not to find your unique look. The very concept of presets makes unique look an oxymoron, but because it can be a way to quickly help you decide what else is important or how to think about what's important or what trade-offs you're willing to make. Luminar Neo does make it easy. But let's take a step back because I don't want you to use presets as a crutch, as you may have in Instagram, because a single LUT or preset will affect an entire image all at once. And editing that might have worked well for a very small image on a smartphone can sometimes look horrible on a larger canvas. Now, one of the most powerful capabilities to explore in your editing journey, the one that has made the biggest difference in our journey, is masking. So let's take a look at that next. This is a tool absent in Instagram which allows you to reinforce what is important in the frame with a granularity and deftness not possible when limited to global changes across the entire frame. It is, in fact, tantamount to the dodging and burning for which the legendary landscape photographer Ansel Adams was famous, taken to the next level. He dodged and burned more than 50 different locations on his renowned Moonrise Hernandez, New Mexico, but that was pretty much limited to exposure. With a product as powerful and easy to use as Luminar Neo, you can go far beyond that with speed and nuance Ansel could only have dreamed about. Like this, where Luminar AI goes beyond simple linear and radial gradients to automated and atomized masking like this. Not only can you change exposure, but you can change texture, color, sharpness. Just phenomenal. What if we could take masking to the next level? What happens, for example, when you have an image you love, except for an utterly blank sky, the weather just wasn't cooperating? Back in the earlier days of Photoshop, this would be one instance where layers would be required and would mean massive futzing, at least the way I think about it. But with Luminar Neo, it's a cakewalk, a perfect application of masking and their sky replacement, like this. But sometimes the most interesting images have nothing to do with skies and everything to do with what's down below. Jazz clubs, street scenes, you get the idea. We're talking low light. But if you don't have a fast lens or want greater depth of field, the price you pay is either slowing down the shutter speed or increasing the ISO. The thing is, most of us will want to use the aperture we want and the shutter speed we want, artistic choices or choices made to increase the probability of a sharp frame. This usually means opting for a higher ISO, often to the point of introducing noise, a lot of noise, and reducing dynamic range in the process. But once again, for modern software like Luminar Neo, this is no big thing. It's called denoising, and it is yet another capability Instagram simply doesn't have, like this.
Back in the film days of my youth, this kind of image was simply impossible, never mind the edit, because film speed was so limited. Back then, ASA 1200 was the bomb achieved by pushing Triax in development using AccuFine Oh Baby. Today, what's a little ISO 6400, 12,800, 25,000 or higher between friends using the latest sensors and processors augmented by this kind of software? The key, however, as with all of these tools, is a light touch. In your journey to the next level in your editing, you may have to unlearn the heavy-handed editing to which you may have grown accustomed using Instagram for that tiny screen. So that's it. I think I'll stop here for now. A quick look at just some of the capabilities that open up to you once you move beyond Instagram and other basic editing tools to a powerful, fun, keenly priced editing platform that can grow with you. I mean, I haven't even mentioned the extensions you can purchase individually or together for Neo from HDR Merge for those instances when the dynamic range of the scene can really only be captured through blending multiple exposures to next level AI based noise reduction. Additional tools like background removal, upscale for larger printing, focus stacking for macro shots in particular, super sharp and magic light. I'll leave it to you to visit the site and see what these are all about with a little more detail. But I would be remiss if I didn't add this. I am delighted Skylum sponsored this video. I'm delighted they asked me to do it. That's because A, most photographers simply don't need the complexity or expense of high-end editing software. B, competition is a good thing. And C, I like Skylum's focus on its customers and its commitment to continuous improvement and a growing list of extensions, this morning's announcement of panoramic stitching being only the latest proof of this. Finally, beyond all of that, most of all, I did this video because Skylum is a small entrepreneurial company with real people. I have a soft spot for that. A unique company and a Ukrainian company building something special at a moment in world history when their entire country is engulfed in flames once again, fighting for its very survival, its very right to exist. I want to see Skylum thrive. I want to see all of Ukraine thrive. I want to see all of humanity thrive on this infinitesimally small planet of ours. As a photographer, as a human being with an eye, a head, and a heart, how could you or I want anything else? So yes, please, do show Skylum some love. Check them out at 3bmep.co slash Luminar Neo to learn more. And if you decide to go for it, save 10% by using the coupon code Hugh. I'll put that link down in the description below. Thanks, guys.